Hi, this is Mr. Tegmeyer, and we are going to break up the simple machines into several smaller presentations so that you can review presentations not as one large one but as smaller ones so you can study just those topics that you need some help in. So let's get started. Well, let's talk about uh, what are the simple machines. There are six. The lever, uh, as you see here, which is actually a transmission. The wheel and axle, denoted by the Ferris wheel. And a pulley, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's lifting the aircraft. In running out the six simple machines, you see an inclined plane, denoted by the roller coaster. A wedge, which in this case is shown by an axe and finally a screw. So first let's define what mechanical advantage is. There are two kinds of mechanical advantage that uh, mechanical advantages that we are going to learn about and study. Uh, both of them are ratios. One has to do with forces and the other has to do with distances. Uh, there are also two other terms that you need to know and understand. One is that of resistance and the other of effort. So when we talk about effort forces, for example, the effort force is that force that you impart on, say, a lever or a wheel or whatever it might be. That's that force that, that's you pushing or that's you pulling on something. And the resistance force is that force that uh, let's say you're using a lever and you're trying to move a rock. It's the weight of that rock or that boulder that you're trying to move. That's the resistance force. The effort distance then is, in the case of a lever, which we will see, it's the distance between the force that you impart and the fulcrum on that lever. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, here you see uh, two ways to move a box to the top of a ramp. You can lift it straight up or you can slide it up the ramp. Um, and here we use an example of four to one. And that's really the proper way to write a mechanical advantage as a ratio. A four, a colon, and a one. You could also write it just plain old four, that's fine. But what does this really tell us about what's going on? When we talk about forces, in this case, what it means is that the magnitude of the effort force is four times less than the magnitude of the resistance force. So let's take a look at this. So what that means is to lift the box straight up takes four times as much force than if you were to push that same box up the ramp. So let's say I have, uh, so let's say I can lift 100 pounds. Uh, so I can lift a 100 pound box to that height or I can take that same 100 pounds and I can push a 400 pound box up to the top. But we also give up something. We give up distance. In this case, whether I uh, pull it up, I'm pulling it up four times a shorter distance. If I'm pushing it up the ramp, I'm pushing up four times the distance, roughly speaking. And to kind of put everything together, we need to take a look at a form of energy that we call work. Um, you've probably been introduced to work in science in some form or another. And really the definition of work is uh, a force, F, times some distance. Uh, and the parallel signs there, the two look like they look like long eyes. That just means it's a parallel distance, and that distance is parallel to the applied force. And pretty much everything that we do, uh, you can assume that. So if we push that box from an initial position to its final position, the amount of work we do is equal to that force F times that distance. And so the units are uh, newtons times the distance would be meters, and it's actually joules. You can write newton meters or you can write joules. That's the metric equivalent. 
if we're talking um, US customary units, a force would typically be pounds and a distance might be inches or feet. So typically we would say inch pounds or foot pounds. So if we go back to that ramp with the boxes, the work done in each case is the same. The force times the distance. It doesn't matter what kind of machine you use, you're still doing the same amount of work. Well, when it comes to mechanical advantage ratios, we say here one is the magic number, and I'll explain what that means. Typically, what we're going to find is that the mechanical advantage, or MA, is greater than 1. Um, in most machines, we're going to find that. What does that mean? That means that less effort force is required to move that object or do that work. But what we're giving up is greater distance. So we're going to have to push that or pull that thing, whatever it is, that resistance force. We're going to have to move it a greater distance if MA is greater than 1. That's an important thing to know. We can have a mechanical advantage less than 1, and you'll actually see an example uh, on the last slide. In this case, it's just the opposite. In this case, we're actually going to have a greater force than the resistance force. So in other words, if I have a resistance force of 100 pounds, I might have to have 200 pounds of force to move it. The advantage, though, is that I'm not going to have to move it as far, so my distance is less. And one final important thing, mechanical advantage can never be equal to uh, or less than zero. It always has to be positive. So let's take a, a closer look at the two different kinds of mechanical advantage. So the first kind we're going to look at is called ideal mechanical advantage, or IMA. And this is purely a, a theoretical calculation. Uh, we're going to be, we can measure distances or we're going to be given distances. And it's important to note here that in the ideal world, we don't consider friction. So two important takeaways from this slide. Don't include friction and we include distances. So ideal distance. And here you see the formula It's the ratio of the effort distance DE, D sub E, divided by D sub R, which is the resistance distance. Then the other kind of mechanical advantage we want to look at is actual. And this is where we look at the forces. And this, says, this slide says inquiry-based. So that implies that we have to take some sort of measurement. So we probably know the resistance force because we've weighed something, or maybe we don't. We don't always have to know that. We're gonna know the effort or the resistance, one of the two. And in this case, actual implies real world, and we do take friction into account. So two things, two big takeaways from this slide are, actual means friction, actual means forces. And you can see the formula there, where we have the resistance force on top. Remember for IMA resistance was on the bottom. And we have the effort force on the bottom. So in most cases you're going to find that the mechanical advantage is greater than one. And here you see an example of a, of a windmill where you have uh, the force from the blades that are turning a turbine inside there. A little more tricky can you think of an example where it would be less than one? How about exercise machines? So here you want to make your exercise machines smaller so that they move a uh, uh, lesser distance. If you had a mechanical advantage greater than one, those machines would have to be huge and your gym would have to be huge. So this concludes our presentation on mechanical advantage.